hooves. A purple-faced leaf monkey. Found nowhere else except Sri Lanka. And this variety lives only in the country's lush rainforests. It rarely descends to the ground. Instead, choosing to mate and feed with its troop in the relative safety of the treetops. Branches and vines make for great playgrounds. Some youngsters can get a little carried away. But it's clear, when they're frolicking in the foliage, that these leaf monkeys belong to the trees. Recently, local naturalists spotted someone different in the forest. This too is a purple-faced leaf monkey, but an even more rare white variety. Naturalists have found them in just 14 troops and in a tiny part of isolated rainforest. This could be evolution in action. Varying levels of pigmentation mean these monkeys can range from piebald to snowball white. And the females seem to be at an advantage. Those with white pelts appear to be more likely to be chosen as mates. But the fair maidens don't have it all their own way. Such a striking appearance makes babies easy pickings for predators. A passing black eagle. Fear spreads through the troop. Everyone dashes for cover. Today, both grey and white escape the aerial threat. Avoiding predators as best they can, the monkeys live almost entirely in the trees. Only if the distance between branches became too great would they risk descending to the ground. And even then, they'd be wary. For down on the forest floor lies the largest predator to hunt amongst these trees a rock python. At five meters long, she uses her body to crush the life out of her victims. But today those muscles are being put to a very different use. Coiling around her clutch of giant eggs, she generates heat. With constant, gentle muscular contractions, 
She keeps her eggs warm. She sat guard on her clutch for several weeks. But her maternal instincts will last only so long. Sensing the arrival of her young, she departs. Leaving her babies at this most vulnerable moment is an unusual act of parenting. But she has hardly fed for weeks. Her motherly instincts could be overpowered by her predatory ones. Now their work must begin. Using a special egg tooth, the baby sliced through the leathery shell. Tentatively, they emerge. Tasting the air. One day, they will become feared hunters, capable of eating even Sri Lanka's most iconic predator, the leopard. But right now, they are vulnerable. They fan out across the forest floor. Pythons are solitary, so sibling rivalry starts early. Each of them must find their patch, and for now, their own place to hide. Nothing in this forest is safe. The crested serpent eagle. From high in the canopy, he scans the forest floor. Patiently, he uses a sit-and-wait strategy for catching his prey. Newly emerged pythons make for a perfect breakfast. Only a handful of the hatchlings will survive to adulthood. But those that do will triple in length in their first year. And when fully grown, they're one of the largest snakes in the world. Like every living creature in these forests, they must fight for limited space. Sri Lanka's rainforests are found only in one small part of the island. Two thirds of Sri Lanka is dominated by lowland plains where harsh, dry seasons dictate the rhythm of life. But in the mountainous southwest corner of the island, rains keep the lands lush throughout the year. Here, in dense rainforests, the competition for finite resources has propelled evolution. With three quarters of Sri Lanka's biodiversity found in the wet zone, species adapting to exploit every centimeter of the forest. The result is a profusion of life where colorful gems glint in the green.
home to trapeze artists and extravagant dresses. A place where robins look like magpies. And magpies look like clowns. The rare Sri Lankan blue magpie. To survive in these forests, it helps not to be picky. Fruits, frogs and insects are all on the menu. Caterpillars are a favorite treat. The problem is, they have spiny hairs to deter most birds. He, however, has a clever trick. He's learned a quick wipe on a branch will remove any of the itchy fur. But he's not preparing supper for himself. He has two other mouths to feed. These birds are found nowhere else on Earth but Sri Lanka's rainforest. And their unusual parenting technique is almost as unique. Both parents raise the brood, but only mum incubates the new arrivals. Frantically waggling her wings is a code for dad to hand over his latest catch. Nothing too unusual about that. But this pair enlists other helpers too. For their older offspring, having chicks of their own would be unsustainable when competition for resources is tough. So younger members of the flock have to wait their turn to breed. Everyone pitches in to make sure this year's small brood survives. Brother, sister, aunts and uncles all help to forage for food. Raising a brood in this way is sensible when territories are scarce. So in these crowded forests, this family seems to have found a clever way to ensure the survival of each new generation. Protecting young and ensuring the survival of your species is not easy. Especially in a place where competition for territory is unrelenting. But one creature is ruthless in its determination to fight and protect its home turf. Weaver ants. A colony can eliminate millions of victims each year. Alone, they're amongst the smallest creatures in the forest. Together, they're one of its most formidable armies, capable of manipulating their environment. They're able to occupy virtually any and every part of the forest, from the leaf litter to the treetops. When it comes to building their camp, their complex displays of teamwork are unrivaled anywhere else in the natural world. Gripping leaves with their legs and jaws, they pull the greenery together. Holding tight, they wait for the others in the colony to stitch the leaves together. 
and larvae are brought up to the joins, where a gentle squeeze elicits a gossamer of silk. Moving back and forth, the ants create a living loom, weaving these walls together with a sheet of silk. creating a perfectly camouflaged base camp from which the colony will send out its raiding parties. Across Sri Lanka's forests, another ancient civilization has carved out his own niche. Man. Survival techniques have been passed down from generation to generation. Each dawn and dusk, he cuts a thin layer from the flowers of this kittel palm to release sap. It's used to make sweet jaggery, Sri Lanka's answer to sugarcane. The trees provide an income for his family, as they have done for centuries. Some take sustenance from the trees, others have found the forests provide more. This is the most sacred of all Sri Lanka's forests. On the tallest forest peak in the north of the island, an ancient and reclusive order of forest monks devote themselves to a life of perfect solitude. Many of the plants here were once used by them as medicine. Today, the forest cradles the remains of their Ayurvedic hospital, where they ground plants and herbs, which, they believed, contained the power to heal. One quarter of the plants in Sri Lanka are found nowhere else. And of these, 60% are found only in its rainforests. But on its edges, new introduced species compete for space. Cultivated in certain parts of the country, these newcomers bear the world's largest tree-borne fruit, providing plenty of food for Sri Lanka's unique hanging parrot. Jackfruit is a magnet for the creatures of the forest. Squirrels are next to the feast. Rich in nutrients, it's a mighty meal. The largest of the fruits can weigh more than 45 kilograms. So there's plenty of succulent, fruity flesh to go round. But he quickly makes way for his oversized cousin. At close to a meter in length, this giant squirrel is one of the world's largest. Even giants have to learn to share.
with even bigger fans of this fruit near. They don't have the tree to themselves for long. A troop of tock macaques decide it's their turn. And the whole family tuck in. The name Jack is thought to be a modification of the Indian word chaka, meaning round. Something this fruit won't be for long. If it was planted by people, then there may not be much left by the time they come to harvest. Down below, others are preparing for their feast. The weaver ants march with their prey, flying termites in a funeral-like cortege. A ceremony with a macabre end. The lives of these termites were short, but their bodies will not go to waste. Forests of Sri Lanka thrive in this warm, wet climate. Each year, the wettest part of the island is inundated with up to five meters of rainfall. Hot sun causes moisture to rise from the land almost as fast as the rain can fall. Each day it condenses into great clouds which dance across the canopy, preparing to fall as rain once more. But climb higher into its mountainous heart and a startlingly different forest is revealed. Hidden away in the highlands are Sri Lanka's cloud forests. Here, temperatures are lower December and January bring frost to the high hills, and temperatures can fall below zero. The upward movement of cool air condenses into a thick mist. Trees, bent double like old men, stunted and gnarled, are cloaked with almost constant moisture. Their twisted branches festooned with epiphytes, plants that cling to the trees, like mosses, lichen, and orchids. Stripping moisture from the passing mist, they saturate their body tissues, sometimes up to 400 times their dry weight, before dripping excess water onto the ground below. This waterlogged world is poor in nutrients. Nothing here must be allowed to go to waste. The lack of nitrogen in the soil has driven some plants to extraordinary lengths in order to survive. Covered in minute hairs with drops of sticky, slimy fluid at their tips, the sundew catches its prey on the wind. in the same way a spider casts her web to catch insects. The more they struggle, the stickier the situation. Curling over to ensure its victim's defeat, the sundew digests insects' tissues and the precious nutrients within. The cloud forests of Sri Lanka have bred an army of specialists. A legion of millipedes march, breaking down decaying matter. Everything here has its own technique to survive. Meet the marbled rock frog. 
This unique frog is found only in Sri Lanka and only in these mountain peaks. His unusually flat body is perfectly camouflaged with the rocky surface of his surroundings, helping him to survive in fast-flowing, shallow mountain streams. It's a family trait which starts young. These tadpoles are perfectly suited to living on the surface of rocks. Just like this freshwater crab. Living 1,500 meters above sea level, it's one of 49 species of freshwater crabs found only in Sri Lanka. A natural laboratory of evolutionary experimentation where for millions of years species have evolved in isolation. Just like this old man of the trees. A bear monkey rests on a branch. His specially adapted long fur helps him to cope with colder climates. Like his grey and white cousins, living further down these mountain slopes, he's a purple-faced leaf monkey. But he's adapted to the damp and the cold although such thick fur does require a little upkeep. Born two months ago, around the coolest day of the year, this baby's straight white tufts will droop as she gets older. But it's this thick fur that's helped her to survive the worst of this year's cold. And she has the added advantage of belonging to a troop of monkeys who found a sneaky way to make their lives a little easier. Each morning, they cross into one of Sri Lanka's highest botanical gardens. Predator-free, it's the perfect place to indulge in exotic plants like this mimosa. Like kids in a candy store, they gorge on vividly colored snacks. But, unlike their diet, their future is not so bright. Some scientists worry that many of Sri Lanka's primates may not survive far beyond the next 20 years. Their loss would be the sad conclusion to a story that began 300 years ago. In the 1700s, the British arrived in these forests. They ruled this island, raising trees to the ground to make space for plantations of a new and imported crop. Coffee. But that's not what's being plucked from these hillsides today. A disastrous blight wiped out the embryonic highland coffee industry. And the British turned instead to another imported plant, tea. Within a decade, Ceylon's tea was world famous. But its growth meant that forests were reduced to more and more isolated fragments, islands within an island. Species found nowhere else on Earth became isolated from the rest of Sri Lanka. As night falls across Sri Lanka's remaining forests, a net of stars is cast across the trees.
caught in the glow of their soft light. Spiders, porcupines and bats emerge from the gloom. A new set of creatures competing for the same resources as their daytime neighbors. A ghostly apparition. Once Sri Lanka would have been filled with these strange creatures. One of the most ancient primates in the world. The slender loris. As his forest habitat is shrunk, so too is his presence. This male lives deep in the monsoon forests in the lowlands of the country. But his mountain dwelling cousins have been brought to the brink of extinction. Tonight, he has his own survival in mind, seeking out the ripest of the fruits of the forest. Using his lanky limbs, with specially adapted hands and feet, he maneuvers across spindly branches. A dexterous and nimble predator, whose tastes run to more than just fruit. Juicy dragonfly. With supper over, it's time to attend to more pressing matters. He spies a female loris amongst the branches. renew their bonds, licking and swapping scent. Her brief encounter over, she deposits urine on a branch and leaves a clear message. This is her territory. As the full moon continues to light up the night sky, its beams coax the catapult flower to reveal its fragile beauty. One of the few plants on Earth to bloom at night. As the sun's first rays illuminate the forest, the day-blooming plants and trees continue their struggle for life. The black bulbul sings to herald the new day. In a shaft of morning light, the seed sails down from the canopy hopeful of germinating on the floor below. Others spin in the breeze. Their protracted fall gives them the chance to be carried far from the parent tree. 
like the blades of a helicopter. They spin and glide across the forest. The further they travel, the more chance of finding a place to take root. It's not just the animals here competing. The plants contest for space and light. These are the forest survivors. On the forest floor, fragile young plants catch what little sunlight they can. The start of their long journey to the canopy above. Only a few will make it to such giant heights. Many trees can't use the wind to spread their seeds, so they must rely on animals to disperse them. With wings nearly a meter across, these giant fruit bats are fast and powerful flyers. The largest bats on the planet. Each morning, these nocturnal creatures roost communally in the safety of the forest's tallest trees. Their sharp-nosed faces give them their common name, flying foxes. Their clawed feet well adapted to bearing each creature's weight. By day, there's nothing to do but hang around. Perhaps cooling off if the heat gets a little too much. Like a strange dark fruit, they dangle from the branches. Each mother will give birth once a year. Her pup entirely dependent on her for its first few months. Each new life brings new hope to these forests. These bats are the caretakers of the trees. Each night they leave the roost in search of fruit and nectar. In doing so, they inadvertently perform one of the most vital roles in the ecosystem of the rainforests. With forests fragmented and scattered, these fruit bats are the only creatures who can carry large seeds from one patch to the next, helping the forest to regenerate. Flying between remote outposts, they carry messages of survival. Scientists now believe bats are key to restoring forests to what they once were. Each night, unbeknownst and unseen by the island's human inhabitants, the bats keep the forests alive. These forests have thrived alongside us for centuries. Sri Lanka's reverence for the natural world led to a peaceful existence between man and forest. With the forest often claiming back what was once theirs. Today, its wildlife faces the familiar pressure of competition with people 
over space and resources. But long before nature conservation became fashionable in the West, ancient Sri Lankans established places where nature was worshipped. And so, in these modern fractured worlds, people must be seen not as a threat, but as an opportunity for the balance to be restored. Nature doesn't need every corner of Sri Lanka to itself. But with each niche of these jungles so tightly packed with wonder,